Hello, welcome. Today I'm gonna to be doing a neck massage to help with anxiety and I'm gonna be working on the lovely Emmy. And I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So whenever um, I have a client who's opened up to me about feeling anxious, I know that I want to be somewhat gentle. Um, so, and work maybe a little bit more slowly. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start with something like really slow. And um, I find that working with, you know, a quicker effleurage or petrissage technique um, can be, can feel really nice, but it can be like a little too much if someone's feeling really anxious. So I like to do a lot of compressive work so especially on certain areas and I'm gonna go ahead and um, just start doing circles along the occipital ridge and these are compressive circles I'm you know using just enough pressure you don't want to be overly tentative either because that's not very reassuring so just kind of finding a balance. And sometimes, um, depending on how my client is holding their shoulders or their body, sometimes I'll start with the suboccipitals and other times I will start with the occipitalis. Um, just feel like Right now, starting with these suboccipitals feels right. And there's really like no right or wrong. It all works. Um, but it's really important to just trust those instincts when you have them about clients or situations in general. I find that the thing I need to be most aware of what I'm doing more subtle work, more detailed work is not to um, hold tension in my own body. It's not easy always when it when something requires a good bit of concentration to really stay grounded in your own body. But just taking in a deep breath is really all you need to kind of recenter in that way. Most massage therapists that I know are over givers, so it's really important to just find that balance. Not um, just when you're not working on clients, but when you're in the process of really like being aware of your own body and giving yourself what you need. Those deep breaths, those sips of water. And just energetic boundaries too, like, um, you know, just being present is really all you need to do to have healthy boundaries with clients. I remember the first um, day that I did massage, like, professionally, I got like so sick that night and I realized that that was like my first lesson in boundaries and I just wanted so badly to do a good job and um, you can, you know, do your best and do a good job without overextending yourself. So I have spent enough time here, um, I'm kind of feeling some imbalances from right to left and I'll go back to that, but I'm spending a lot of time, um, you might be wondering why I'm spending so much time in this area when it comes to anxiety. Um, a lot of people don't know that. So anxiety is like a physiological thing. So sometimes when certain areas are forced into positions, they get really tight and you can have this anxious feeling 
without you knowing why. Um, so sometimes this occipitalis gets really tight when you have that forward head posture or you're leaning over a lot. Um, also, if you are in a habit of um, kind of furrowing your brow and um, storing tension in your like forehead area and that frontalis, um, that has a direct impact on your occipitalis. So it's just all very connected in ways that might be surprising. When I say to anybody that's feeling anxious, like you're not doing anything wrong. I think that sometimes people think that they're not thinking positive enough or whatever, and that's not, I don't know, it's just not the best approach when it comes to anxiety. Like really having um, just compassion for yourself when you're feeling anxious. Because there might be causes that you don't really, you're unaware of. I'm just really lingering on this occipitalis, um, really giving the forehead area a chance to relax more indirectly as I work. And I'm going to just work my way around the ears. And I am going to eventually work on that frontalis muscle, but I'm going to go ahead and work on these temples a little bit first. I'm going to do those little circles. So I never really approach each client the same. I try to really be present with each personality and, you know, whatever the issues are that are going on. And one piece of advice, whenever you're doing these compressive movements, you want to make sure that you're able to rest your hands on the table. If I, my arms were floating, this would be like absolutely exhausting. So just no need for it. So this is going to feel a lot different if I'm thinking about, you know, what I'm going to have for dinner or whatever. Um, if I'm not present, these compressive holds are just not going to feel the same. So just holding the space and staying present is really important, especially when you're doing more subtle work like this. And I'm going to start to do some scalps, so just making sure that Emmy's hair is not going to get pulled. And I'm going to work on this frontalis muscle. You can do, um, you know, there's no one way to do work on this muscle. You can do nice long strokes back and forth. You can do little circles. So I'm brushing against all these nerve endings, which can feel really nice. And I'm going to start to do just little circles. You don't need to press super hard. This is a fairly thin muscle. Oh. I like to work on this muscle tissue from different angles and in different ways. And this whole time, just allowing my wrist to rest on the table so that I'm more effective what I'm doing. And 
working my way around to closer towards the ears. Moving away from that frontalis muscle back towards the occipitalis and the occipital ridge. I've had scalp massages where therapists have done quicker movements or slower movements and it all can feel really good if it's done with intention. And I typically work a little bit slower because it feels more natural to me. And I'm starting to think about what I can do to help these bigger muscles in the neck relax. So paying a little bit of attention to this mastoid process and I'm gonna do some compressive holds, just micro circles in there to help the SEM let go a little bit. Sometimes deep tissue can be really um, helpful if someone's having anxiety. It just kind of depends on the person. Um, but I, I have some clients who love deep tissue when they're feeling on the more anxious side. I'm never trying to do deep tissue in these more superficial muscles or these attachment sites, but definitely firm with my pressure. And you can absolutely do deeper work in the suboccipital. It's a place that can respond really well. And I'm going to go ahead and work my way down along the occipital ridge. And I'm going to start to increase my pressure a little bit. And just making sure that Emmy's head is supported with my left hand so that she's nice and stable. And before I forget, I want to thank a few of our patrons. I'd like to thank Sean Downs, Thomas H., and Dean Barker. Thank you guys so much for your support. When you're um, dealing with someone who is wanting help with anxiety, you don't want to approach the massage like you're walking on eggshells either because that can make them feel more uncomfortable. So you just want to be confident in the pressure that you're offering, but you want to be gentle at the same time. I'll usually spend um, a good bit of time in this accept in the suboccipital area. After I do that, um, more superficial work in the occipitalis. I kind of find myself, so I'm kind of going back and forth. There's one spot here that I keep going back to because it feels, um, bit more contracted and when you're doing this kind of work it's really good if you can encourage your client to relax their jaw and feel space in their mouth by letting their tongue rest on the lower part of their mouth just that can help the occipitalis relax a lot
And whenever I'm going in, working more locally on one side, I make sure that I get an angle that feels really comfortable. So if I were to try and do all of this work from the very front of the table, it would be way harder. It also puts a really weird angle on your finger joints. spending quite as much time on the side. Turning that nice and slow. And I'm gonna do just a little stretch for the cervical spine and all these little muscles. Just scooping my fingers and pulling a little bit. You don't wanna do this if someone has a herniated disc or any chronic neck issues, but for most people it feels really good. And taking my hands away nice and slow, and that's all for today guys. Thank you for joining us today guys. If you enjoyed today's video, you should check out our Patreon page where you'll find some really great content exclusive to our Patreon channel. I look forward to seeing you there. If you enjoy these videos, please join us at PsycheTruthPatrons.com for dozens of exclusive videos and premium programs. We have over a thousand videos you won't find on YouTube, such as modeling and fashion hauls, exclusive massage videos, ASMR, behind the scenes, bloopers, and much more. It's a great way to help us keep the cameras rolling so we can continue making the content you love. Patrons will get two to three new exclusive videos each week, so I hope you'll consider joining our Patreon family today. Just visit PsycheTruthPatrons.com.